Welcome in, everyone. We're diving deep today, going through these medical reports you've shared, all from back in late 2020. Lots to unpack here. We've got everything from blood work to a PTCCT scan, even bone marrow analysis. Yeah, talk about a full body workup. So we've got these reports from Sai Vishath, Mahatma Gandhi Hospital, Icon Diagnostics. Want to jump right in? Let's do it. Right off the bat, what's interesting is how these reports, even though they're from different places, kind of tell a story. Ooh, a medical mystery. I like it. Right. And the main character in this mystery seems to be this suspicion of non-Hodgkin lymphoma, or NHL for short. Okay, NHL. That rings a bell from those early reports from Satya scans, right? Exactly. They flagged those enlarged lymph nodes first, remember? Both on the ultrasound and the FNEC. Oh, yeah. Those were early on. And then... Path Labs did the biopsy, and their report kind of chimed in, suggesting small lymphocytic lymphoma. You're getting it. It's like all these clues pointing in the same direction, right? Totally. But I remember feeling kind of lost at first. NHL. Isn't that kind of broad? Like, what exactly does that mean? You're right. It's not a single disease. Think of yeah. it more like an umbrella term covering a whole bunch of cancers that affect the lymphatic system. Okay, that makes more sense. So how do we know, like, what flavor of lymphoma we're dealing with here? That's where those fancy tests come in. Immunohistochemistry, that's a big one. Oh, yeah, that one sounded super complex. All those CD markers, CD5, CD20. I felt like I was back in biology class, completely lost. Uh-huh, I get it. But those markers are super important. They help pinpoint the exact subtype of NHL we're dealing with. Like they narrow it down from that big umbrella term. Exactly. And in your case, Path Labs, they did their analysis, looked at everything, and based on what they saw, they're leaning towards small lymphocytic lymphoma. So SLL, not just the general NHL. Right. But they did recommend more testing, you know, just to be absolutely sure. They want to make sure it's definitely SLL and not, say, CLL. It's a CLL. That's chronic lymphocytic leukemia, Spingo. right? Bingo. They kind of overlap sometimes, so got to be thorough. Okay, so we've got our prime suspect, SLL, but we need more evidence to lock it down. Which brings us to drumroll. The PETCT scan. Oh, yes. The PETCT. That's where Mahatma Gandhi Hospital comes in, right? You got it. And let me tell you, this scan, super detailed. Like, it gave us a full-on map of your lymph nodes. Ooh, a lymph node roadmap. Mm -hmm. So what did it show? Well, the first thing that jumps out, it's not just one or two lymph nodes that are enlarged. We're talking widespread involvement, like, everywhere. Everywhere. Like, all over the place. Pretty much. Neck, chest, abdomen, even down in the groin. All showing in large lymph nodes. Wow. That's a lot. Definitely not subtle. They even gave us measurements. One in your neck was 2.5 by 1.5 centimeters. 2.5 centimeters. That's got to be, what, like an inch long? You're not far off. Hard to miss something that size, that's for sure. No kidding. Okay, so we've got multiple reports pointing to lymphoma. <laughs> now this PETCT showing tons of enlarged lymph nodes. Starting to feel pretty convincing. Right. But to really get the full picture, got to look at what's happening inside those lymph nodes, not just their size. Makes sense. Yeah. So next up, blood work and bone marrow. Right. You got it. Blood work first. Remember that high white blood cell count from Sai Yeah, 24,500. That definitely seemed off the charts. Rightfully so. That's yeah. a big clue. And then looking at the breakdown of those white blood cells, the hemogram from Icon Diagnostics, it's like they were reading our minds. How so? Predominantly mature lymphocytes. And guess what? That's a classic sign of CLL. Wait, CLL again? I thought we were leaning towards SLL. We were, but remember, they're closely related. This is where things get even more interesting. Uh-oh, I don't like the sound of that. What else did they find? So they did a bone marrow aspirate, also at Icon Diagnostics. Guess what they found? Don't tell me. More lymphocytes. You got it. Increased lymphocytes, again, lining up with that CLL possibility. Okay, so the plot thickens. Now we've got the blood work, the bone marrow. What? Anything else pointing to CLL? Oh, there's more. This is where the fish test comes in. Ampath did this one. Fish test. That sounds more like a day out on the lake than a medical test. <laughs> I know, right? But trust me, it's super important. And what they found is really interesting. Okay, I'm on the edge of my seat. What'd they catch? They found a deletion on chromosome 13Q. Chromosome 13Q. Sounds scary. What does that even mean? Don't worry. It's not as complicated as it sounds. Basically, it's a genetic abnormality. And guess what? It's frequently seen in CLL. Oh, wow, really? So now I've got the enlarged lymph nodes, the blood work, the bone marrow, Andy, this genetic thing, mm. all pointing towards CLL. Exactly. It seems like our prime suspect might be changing. Yeah, from SLL to CLL. This eye has a good medical mystery. But wait, there's one more twist. Remember that report from Dr. Lal Path Labs? 
The one about your beta-2 microglobulin levels? Vaguely. Hmm? That doesn't usually have to do with CLL, does it? You're right. It's more commonly used for staging multiple myeloma. But in this case, it might actually be relevant to your situation. Really? How so? Well, your beta-2 microglobulin level came back at the 300 and 135 nanograms per milliliter. 335. That seems high, but I have no context for these things. It's definitely something to pay attention to. While it's not a primary factor in CLL staging, it can still provide valuable information. Interesting. So even though it's not the main event, it can still be a clue. Precisely. Every piece of the puzzle matters. Yeah. Right. All right. So we've laid out all these individual pieces. What does it all mean? What's the big picture here? That's where we're headed next. Time to connect the dots and see what image emerges. Okay, so we've got all this evidence pointing towards CLL. Yeah. But these reports, they're just one part of the story, right? Absolutely. They give us a really good starting point, but we can't forget about you. You're not just a collection of medical reports. Right, like what makes all this really real is that you're living it, dealing with it every day. Exactly. Yeah. And that's where getting your personal medical context is super important. Like, do you have any other health conditions? Oh, that's a good point. Sometimes those things can be connected or at least affect how things are treated. Totally. It's all about seeing the big picture, not just focusing on one piece. And speaking of the big picture, I noticed something interesting in those reports from Satya Scans. Uh-oh, what'd you find? Remember how they mentioned your liver? It was, and I'm quoting here, mildly enlarged. Hmm, yeah, I remember seeing that. I didn't think much of it at the time, but now you've got me worried. No need to worry just yet, but it's definitely worth bringing up with your doctor. Yeah. And there was something else. They also found some, and again, I'm quoting, focal hypermetabolism in your prostate gland. Hold on, back up. Hyper what now? Haha, <laughs> yeah. Medical jargon can be a bit much sometimes. Basically, it means there was some increased activity in that area. Okay, and is that, like, bad? Yep. Could it be related to the CLO? It's too early to tell. Honestly, it's possible it's totally unrelated, just a coincidence. So we should probably add those to the list of questions for the doctor. Definitely. Better safe than sorry, right? Especially since the PDCT didn't really clarify things about your liver, although it didn't show any actual lesions there. Okay. Well, that's slightly reassuring at least. So enlarged liver, weird prostate activity. What else did we find that we should ask about? Well, remember those reports from ThyroCare? The Coombs test and that PSA test. Oh, yeah. Those were all normal, right? Yep. Coombs test was negative, which is good. It helps rule out certain autoimmune stuff that can sometimes happen alongside CLL. So one less thing to worry about. Exactly. And your PSA level was 1.38, which is technically within the normal range. But there's always a but. Well, it's something to keep an eye on. Even though it's not super high, any elevation in PSA is worth discussing with your doctor. Okay. Good to know. See, this is why I like having an expert around. Helps connect the dots, even when they seem kind of random. That's what I'm here for. But remember, the most important thing is how you feel about all of this. You mean like my actual experience, not just the test results. Exactly. What are your biggest concerns right now? What are your priorities when it comes to treatment and all that? Right, because at the end of the day, these are your decisions to make. 100%. And having all this information from the reports, plus your own feelings and experiences, that's what will help you make the best choices moving forward. So how do we take all this, the reports, the unknowns, the questions, and use it to actually make those decisions? That's where the real teamwork comes in. We've got all these puzzle pieces, and now it's time to have a conversation with your doctor to put them all together. So we've talked about the reports, we've talked about you, now it's time to talk about What's next? Hmm. What do we actually do with all this information? You're right. It's not enough to just have the information. It's about using it to make decisions, to take action. And I think a big part of that is going to be talking to your doctor, like really having an open, honest conversation about all of this. 100%. These reports, they're not the be all and end all. They're more like conversation starters, tools to help you and your doctor make the best decisions for your health. Exactly. And speaking of conversation starters, I feel like we've got to circle back to that beta-2 microglobulin thing. Yeah. That still feels like a big question mark. Yeah, definitely something to put at the top of the list. That high level, it could just be a thing or it could mean something more. Got to figure that out. And that's where the doctor comes in, right? They yeah. can look at everything together, the reports, your history, how you're feeling, and get a clearer picture. Exactly. Like, remember how we talked about that saying, when you hear hoofbeats, think horses, not zebras. Yeah, but sometimes it is a zebra. Exactly. And your doctor, they're the ones with the experience to figure out if it's a horse or a zebra situation. Yeah. Or maybe something else entirely. True. 
Sometimes it feels like the more we learn, the more questions we have. But that's okay, right? It's more than okay. It's a good thing. It means you're engaged, you're paying attention, you're advocating for yourself. That's what it's all about, right? Right. Being an active participant in your own health journey. Hmm. And I think these deep dives, they really help with that. For sure. Knowledge is power. And the more you understand, the more confident you can be in those conversations with your healthcare team. Couldn't have said it better myself. So as we wrap things up here, what's the one thing you want to leave our listener with today? Take a deep breath. Remember that you've got this. You're doing the work. You're asking the questions. You're taking control. And remember, you don't have to do it alone. Perfectly said. And hey, thanks for diving in with us today. Until next time.